a quick command square root 25, which is right here. So that square root 25, of course, five. And then this is a graph. Uh, in short, it's a histogram of 100 random normal distributed numbers. So our norm means random normal distribution. How many numbers? 100 of them. So I create 100 random numbers and plot the histogram, for example, if you highlight our norm 100, that's the random 100 random numbers I just created. So I plotted the histogram uh, of these 100 numbers so that I got the graph right here. So that question. Yes. So uh, first of all, you know, I didn't mean to explain this kind of detail the first time, but since you guys asked, First of all, yes, random numbers, and as name suggests, they're random. So the first time you create 100 random, second time you create 100 numbers, so on and so forth, actually, they could be different. Uh, actually, they must be different. Unless, unless if you really want to make it the same, you can set a seat uh, to make sure every time you create the same 100 numbers. I'll show you those uh, features later on. But right here, I create 100 numbers. I want to plot the histogram. Still remember what's a histogram? Basically, to check how the distribution of those numbers, right? How many, how many of them they are close to zero? How many, how many of them they are positive, negative, right? Far away from zero, right? So the in short, a histogram is try to help us check uh, if our distributions, for example, uh, similar to normal or not, right? So if it's really normal, it should be first of all kind of magic. Second of all, maybe centered at a number such as zero, right? If you got a graph, if you got a histogram, such as, you know, maybe say skewed to the left, skewed to the right, right? So it's a signal, probably the distribution is not normal, right? Or for example, suppose this is a histogram of which, suppose you got a tall bar right here, right? So it means, uh, no, that they, you know, the distribution probably not normal, right? So uh, the first uh, simple example, uh, so if there are some details, uh, confuse you, ignore it, because I want, from this example, I want to show you a cool feature of our studio, which is, uh, I showed this uh, in the big data class, if you're in the same class uh, or there. So let me show you the feature right here. Actually, last time I, I showed you a quick example, right? Once you open our file, write some, you know, programs in a second, let me, if you click this button, the notebook button, looks like a page from a notebook, right? It says compile report. If you click compile report, so last time I've already installed whatever needed uh, packages, right? So now the little window pops up, ask me which format do you like? HTML, PDF, Word? Let's stick with HTML because HTML, you can see, you know, there's no pages. Word or PDF, those are page by page, right? HTML, you can, you know, don't worry about the page because it's always continuous like this. So this is a cool feature, first of all, I'm gonna show you, which is uh, all the days, if you do some programming, if you calculate some numbers, if you plot some graphs, you have to, for example, copy and paste, collect everything, put, you know, copy codes, put in a maybe a file, right? And copy graph and put it the same, right? Collect everything and put over there so that you show your file, copy and paste the file to your advisor. That's the old day, you know, solution. We don't like that. Nowadays, uh, since we have our studio, a cool feature is I simply click the button compile, right? Our studio compiles uh, the file for me so that, see, is a nice output, is a nice output. This is the command two plus three. Output is five. This is my command two plus three. This is output five. This is my command square root 25. This is output again, five, right? And that's my command histogram of 100 numbers. Output the graph right here, right? So that no matter how many graphs you have, no matter how many tables or you know commands on so forth, simply, as long as you make sure your calls, everything is correct, simply click a button compile for me. 
our studio, you know, immediately produce output for you, right? So that you you never have to call and paste to collect everything. <laughs> so that uh, we don't, we don't have to do that. That's really cool about our studio. Uh, any questions? Uh, a margin, right? Oh, I I guess I I know the reason why. Sometimes if you got to some weird result, you know, very often you're gonna get some weird output. You know, programmers we always uh, have a bugs, we have typos, we have sometimes even weird results. Sometimes even exit and enter again might solve the problem. But in your case, if your computer says uh, some uh, some messages about margin of the graph, if that's the error message you get, most likely. Most likely is uh, you make the this window on your screen on your computer is kind of too small. Simply make it bigger and then click the button again. Probably going to solve the problem. <laughs> so try it, uh, if I solve the problem. It's, uh, for example, let me try. Suppose let me make it. Uh, uh, see, um, my figure margin too. <laughs> already says something like that. If I make this error very very small. So, you know, now my computer already says something about margin, right? Just means I, I leave too small space for the, for the figure so that you click, then click the button might cause some weird, weird problems. Uh, very often, if you, if you change the margin right here, problem solved, right? Uh, but anyway, that's the first example. I call it a super simple example, but there's some more details on to, I want to show you. Uh, first of all, you can see I put some title authors on the first, right? So when you make your own file, such as homework number one, copy and paste these four lines, number one, number two, number three, and number four. So that especially make sure, make sure keep my line number one, number four, keep them there so that the computer. <laughs> oh, those are some formats let the computer know this chunk is the title and the name of your file. <laughs> and in your case, you can simply replace the name somewhere around here. Say, replace this part by, say, for example, homework number one, right? And then replace the name John Smith into your name, right? And maybe if you like, you can also put your ID number, right, over there, so that they correspond to in my output, they correspond to right here. That's the title of your file. In your case, if you if you replace to homework number one, it gonna show us homework one over there. And that's the name, John Smith, right? So that when you do your homework, make sure you change the name. I don't want to, everybody to submit homework with the name John Smith, right? It's a, John did homework for everybody. So make sure you replace the name. So some other details. So you can see for comments, there are some details like, let me put right here. I have a regular comment and a smart comment. Let's check out their difference. A regular comment is right here, a pound sign with some sentence, right? with some words. A smart comment, basically the same, but there's a, the only difference is uh, there's a, how do you call it, a, a, a prime? <laughs> <All right. laughs> Slightly different. So the output looks like right here, a smart comment. So that's a difference. See, a regular com comment, more like a part of your code. But anyway, computer gonna ignore it anyway, right? Smart comment gonna show up like uh, like some sentence or words in your, in your paper, in your dissertation, right? So first of all, both are fine. Both are fine. Both of them, you know, both of them work, whichever you like better. So in what kind of situation smart comment is better? What kind of situation regular comments will, will be better? I would say, say if you check out to the bottom of my file, see I put a you know a you know a, a couple of uh, paragraphs right here. So that in that case, I use smart comments so that output more like a more like a paper, right? So that short answer is uh, uh, if you want to type. Uh, many, many paragraphs, a long discussion, 
for example, suppose my homework asks you, what do you think about this? Between regression number one, number two, which one do you like uh, is better and why, right? Then you have to type a discussion or something like that. A smart comments will be better because you know you more look like a paper, right? more more look like a paragraph in your dissertation, right? But sh if you want to do some short, quick comments, you know, a regular comments will be you know sufficient enough, something like this. So both of them work, but uh, if you if you have a long paragraph, a smart comments will be better. That's the short answer. Uh, Right here, I put some uh, instructions right here. You can read afterwards some, some detail and tips and tricks. Uh, you know, you can read uh, afterwards. That's some quick introduction from the first example, a super simple example. Uh, any questions so far? Yeah. I'll keep going. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for asking. So if you use a smart comments, for example, if I type a really long sentence, right? So for example, if you want to, for example, break in two parts right here, put your uh, sensor over here and click enter. Uh, see, our studio is kind of smart, automatically from here connected to here. So when I click enter, you know, <laughs> our studio automatically make it continuous like that. So only if you leave an empty line right here so that our studio skip that line, leave, uh, leave, see, let's check out the output. In the output, only if you leave an empty line so that our studio leave a space in between. Otherwise, for example, you can, you can make, let's try, you can make many, many parts like this. So let's try, then we compile. This sentence actually we get exactly the same result, right? <laughs> so no matter how many breaks you, you, you make, actually it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, that's the quick introduction about a, sim a simple example. The, the the purpose of this simple example, first of all, uh, especially after you go, go back home, first of all, download this simple example uh, .r file on your computer. And uh, uh, you don't have to modify anything. Directly click compile. Try it on your computer. Make sure make sure it works on a computer. If you get a stuck, maybe the computer asks you to install whatever needed stuff, right? So in that case, if your computer asks you to, to install something, then click yes. Let computer install whatever needed packages. And then you should be able to you know, uh, compile output. So for this, this simple example, you don't have to do anything. Simply, once you download computer, open it on your R Studio, click compile. Make sure it works, right? So <laughs> then later on, you can move on to try other files such as your homework sometimes. Uh, if uh, this is a simple example is good, let's move on to an uh, introduction to R. Let's learn some more details about R Studio. Uh, for example, uh, this introduction.r, where did I find this file? Um, computer, uh, canvas, homepage, textbook, lecture notes, right here. We have some uh, zip files. Bataji.zip file, this is a data set. Uh, it says it's a zip file contains all the data set needed for the semester. And second zip file is a sample codes.zip file. So. In this zip file, let me show you. Uh, where is my, I just download right here. In my downloads uh, folder, so that's a zip file. So unzip of the file, you can see those are uh, our files, sample codes for each chapter, chapter one, it's chapter two, chapter three, so on the first, right? So that, so that you can download the whole package, the whole zip file which contains every, all those sample files we need for the semester, right? So that uh, in class, you don't have to uh, write those notes or type those uh, codes, save your time so that you can focus and listen, right? So, so 
Oh, see the introduction R file is right here. Simple example file also right here. Smart comments, suppress messages. I have a couple of those R files. I I show you them later on. But now let's check out introduction R. Uh, you can double click to and uh, to open this R file. I already I've already opened uh, right here. Uh, first of all, you may notice there is a little um, message right here, right? Like our, set, our studio says package CAR required, but it's not installed. What's the package CAR? Why is required? If you take a closer look at my codes, line number 37, I have a line library CAR. Basically, the, the usage of this line is to is to load a package, uh, you know, uh, of R. So the the idea of R Studio is uh, actually R has uh, R Studio has many many packages. Uh, you know, they could be already installed on a computer, already on your computer. But we don't, you know, we don't have to install everything from the very very beginning because otherwise it's gonna take too much space, right? So whatever needed, we can we can install it very quickly as long as we have internet. Right. So, so if you check out the little window right here, the the tab packages, it shows all the all the packages I've already installed on my computer. For example, I have uh, you know base you know, so on and so forth. They sort it alphabetically, you know, right here. So, in my codes, I were I was talking about the package C A R. So I don't have a CR package listed right here, right? So in that case, you can install it very quickly. How do I install a package? There are more than one way. Our studio is always smart, more than one way. First of all, our studio is smart. See, the message right here, there's a link, install. You can simply click that install button, then computer gonna install it for you. So that's the first option, see, again. Okay. The message has a button of install right here. You can simply click install. The computer gonna ins install it uh, very quickly. That's the first uh, solution. Uh, the the second solution is uh, you can also from packages install right here. Click install and type the name of package C R and click install. <laughs> equivalently, you're going to install the same package on your computer, whichever way you like better, the same thing. So either either directly click install right here or, or choose packages, install, and the type CAR, right? Whichever you like, but probably the first way is easier. You don't have to type anything, just a click install right here, right? For example, let's try the first way. Click install it for me. Then the computer is working on the installation. Uh, you're gonna take one or two seconds, depends on the internet speed, right? So once it's done, then CAR is supposed to show up right here. Let's wait. Let's see, see? CAR shows right here, right? Which means I already have the package CAR available on my case. So that's the little trick. But uh, that's line number 37. Uh, so let's start from the very beginning, talk about one line by line. So the title is uh, I typed introduction to R. Author, I put our course name. Of course, uh, you know, then do your homework, replace those uh, name and you know, your author name correspondingly, right? Uh, so there are a bunch of... Uh, uh, quick cal calculation, two plus three, two minus three, two times three, two divided by three. These are very simple examples. Let me highlight these lines, these lines and click wrong. Uh, what, what's wrong? I don't know why graphic. I don't know what happened, but uh, ignore these uh, warning messages. Uh, two plus three is five. It is correct, but I don't know. There's some why 
computer to pop up some red color lines. I, I'll figure out later on. But anyway, two plus three, of course, five. Two minus three is negative one. Two times three, two divided by three. So two times three in our, our studio, times is a little star. On your keyboards is on the number eight. So, so that's uh, you know a common mistake when people try to calculate two two times three. Sometimes uh, students that don't know where two times uh, multiply. Sometimes people times a little x. So of course <laughs> it's wrong, right? It's a little star. Two times the time is a star, right there. Divide is simply the slash. Make sure the direction goes this way, right? Two divided by three, not the other way around. And. Uh, Two carat three. This is two to power three. Two to power three. In other words, let's check out. Two to power three, of course, is eight, right? Two times two times two, basically, right? So next line, ten square. Of course, uh, that's another example of a carat. Ten to power two, which is uh, ten square, one hundred, right? So far, those are very simple calculations. Uh, by the way, you may notice that sometimes, if you if you like, you can also put comments after your code. For example, I type two times three and a pound sign multiplication. Then whatever goes after the pound sign, that's comments. Computer ignores that part, right? So for regular comments, you can even put right after the line, right? If you like, right? Uh, next line, actually. Next two lines, number 13, 14. These are, these should be exactly the same. What I want to show you is that uh, uh, if you have a, a complicated calculation, for example, if you want to do four square minus three times two, of course, so let's round one by one. Four square, which is uh, 16, right? Two times three, which is six. 16 minus six, of course, a 10, right? So very simple. Computer calculate first term, calculate second term, and the first term minus second term, so that we get an answer. The next line, I put exactly the same, but I put some parentheses, right? So what I want to show you is, uh, as a good habit for a good programmer, actually, it's always suggested sometimes it will be good to put some parentheses to remind you, actually, to avoid confusion, because because sometimes if you type a really long line, you, you know, you may <laughs> not clear to, to yourself and also to other readers, so, right? So that sometimes if you put some parentheses to make it clear, this part, that's part, right? And first half term minus the second term. So, you know, uh, it's a good habit to use some parentheses, right? And uh, next line, I purposely leave a lot of space right here. One minus six plus four. Uh, any questions over? Uh, which which line? Oh, uh, introduction, introduction R, <laughs> introduction R. Uh, you can try it at home. For now, you can <laughs> listen, and uh, you know it should be very simple. I just uh, show you the output line by line. One minus six plus four. Of course, it's easy. Computer gives me answer, negative one. The reason I want to show you this way is uh, I want to show you in R, you know, leaving those spaces, one space, two spaces, three spaces, exactly the same, no difference. In other words, uh, right here, if you, if you remove this space, it's exactly the same. But, but what I want to try to say is, of course, I don't want it. I don't want to leave a lot of space like in my example like this. This is may not be a good example, right? But I want you to leave maybe some you know, one space between some numbers to make it clear so that first term minus second, for example, up here. No matter line number 13 or number 14, see, I purposely leave a space in between right here. Try to try to make it clear, right? <laughs> so first term minus sec second term. So those are some details about programming. In other words, uh, you know, how to make your codes easier to read. Put some parentheses, leave some spaces, right? <laughs> so that uh, make it easier for for yourself and also maybe your your other people to to read. 
uh, 10 to power negative one. So this example I want to show you, actually it's negative one first. It's exactly the same if you put a parenthesis, parenthesis around negative one and then 10 to power negative one. In this example, that's the, that's the issue I was talking about. You know, sometimes people may not sure about uh, how does computer calculate this kind of number, right? We have a carrot, we have minus, right? Computer calculates a first or first or, or negative one first, right? In that case, maybe, maybe it will be a good example to put parentheses to remind yourself negative one, right? Then 10 to power that number. Right to make it clear to you. So even if you you know you know computer calculate negative one first and then ten to the power negative one, right? So sometimes maybe it's 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 good to put a parenthesis to remind yourself. Right. Law number nineteen, negative two, minus minus three. There are two minus signs, or you can call it a negative negative. Uh, two negative signs or two minus signs will be exactly the same as a plus, a positive sign. So this line, it will be negative two plus three. Or you can say it will be the same as minus negative three, right? <laughs> Whichever you like better to, list, you know, to understand, right? Or you can simply say negative, negative. If you have two negative signs, it will become a positive plus, right? So whichever you like better. So either put some parentheses to remind yourself, or maybe, you know, <laughs> replace by a plus, so that to avoid confusion. Question. Uh, yes, it will be the same as, it will be the same as negative two, uh, negative two plus three, exactly the same. I just uh, purposely, you know, created that, <laughs> my, my, to try to show you, <laughs> try to show you sometime you, you want to put some parentheses, right? <laughs> to, to clarify. And right here in this example, you know, some spaces, either put some parentheses or leave some space to remind yourself. Otherwise, maybe, maybe it's, it, if you write something like this, maybe you saw it by mistake, you thought maybe it's a single minus, right? So leave some space or put some parentheses, try to clarify things. Those are some, some technical details, some tips. Because, trust me, you know, your, your codes, also my codes, <laughs> always contain bugs, always contain mistakes. <laughs> so sometimes you may <laughs> probably you create a silly mistake, and you, you may never find it, you know, where it is, right? You try, you know, hours and hours, you can never find it. Oh, gosh, why? Right? It takes so long, but I really, really can't find the bug, right? And so as a habit, leave some spaces, parentheses, make it easier to read. In this way, it's less likely to make mistakes, right? That's it. Uh, error message. Uh... Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> Not a number. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, by the way, by the way, uh, for example, warning messages. Sometimes you see error messages. In R, uh, sometimes you see red color some messages. But sometimes uh, the warning, sometimes it's an error. What's the difference? Basically, if you really run into a mistake, that's we call it error. Warning, warning. Sometimes, you know, we, we programmers, we always joke about this. We, we always ignore those warnings. <laughs> so we don't want... <laughs> What's a warning message? Basically warning is something, for example, computer remind you, hey, for example, you already, you already create a number called X. Later on, maybe you also create the same thing. Your, your later stuff recovers the previous stuff. Your computer, you know, remind you, hey, you, you, you're gonna lose the previous stuff. It, it won't be a problem, but the computer warn you, you're gonna, you know, you might lose something, right? So it's not a mistake, but uh, uh, computer just try to make sure that's exactly what you want, right? So that's the difference between error message and a warning message. Like I said, it's be. <laughs> 
<laughs> we become efficient. We programmers, we, we always swore, ignore warning message. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see, functions. These are some function, log function of 100, exponential function of two. Let's try them. Log 100, 4.6. By default, L-O-G, by default, it's natural log. It's natural log. In other words, we use E as base, natural log. Uh, EXP2 means E to power 2. E is the same number, you know, the base is natural log, E to power 2. So right here, right here, by default, again, L-O-G is E as base, natural log. So you may, you may wonder, how do I supposed to know, right? So, you know, maybe if, since I'm new to, to our studio, how do I supposed to know the base is 10 or E is on the first, right? So it's time for me to introduce a little detail about help right here. In the tab right here, we have plots, packages, and also help. In the help file right here, you can type whatever function you want to check out or detail. For example, log, L-O-G. Let's type L-O-G. So some details about the log functions pops up, log, rhythm, and exponential. For example, L-O-G, this function, computes logarithm. By default, it is natural log, right? So it also mentions some more details like this. and. Uh, to me, especially, especially at the bottom, these e oops, at the bottom, these examples actually they are very helpful. So that during the very first time you learn a new command, you can copy and paste these these codes into the output right here to check out what happens, right? Or you can click the button right here, run these examples, so that you're gonna you're gonna check out what happens for each line. So to learn more details. But in short, LOG is natural log. Later on, we'll see a command, a new command you never you never learned before, right? Always, you can always go to help and type the command name right here to check out more details. Uh, as, I, as I told you, there are always more than one way to find <laughs> you know, a resource in our studio. Uh, besides go to help, you can also type a question mark, and then L-O-G, the command. It's gonna be exactly the same. Let me highlight question mark, L-O-G, click run. See, equivalently, you're gonna have <laughs> this help file pops up, right, and brings us to the same window. Either go to this little window, type L-O-G, or, you know, question mark and type the, the command name. It's the same thing, pops up the, the details. Right, so uh, that's a uh, log function. All right, uh, any any questions so far? We talk about some uh, calculations on the first. Let's continue. I'll show you something about create a variable. Right here, I want to introduce this symbol. What's this? Basically, this is uh, equivalent to an equal sign. For example, for example, let me show you. Uh, for example, let me show you something like this. For example, if I type x two, x equals two, these two exactly the same. These two lines exactly the same. Basically, assign the number two into x. Then later on, whenever you call x. Computer gonna show say you know x is two. The the purpose of this uh, usage will be because later on, for example, say when you do some calculation, you want to save a number into say x, right? Maybe later on save another number into your y, and maybe do some calculation x times y and do whatever calculation, right? So as I told you just now, these two lines so they are exactly the same. So both of them we assign the number two into x assign the number two, you know, right-hand side stuff into X, right? So for example, let me show you. If I highlight the line X equals two, then if I check out how large is my X, what's X? 
computer shows X is two, right? So that if you want to further do whatever calculation such as X times Y, you know, assign number Y equal to three, for example, then X times Y, right? So let me finish this one. This is exactly the same. Assign the number two into X. How did I type this symbol? which looks like an arrow, right? Pointed to, to the left. How did I type this uh, symbol? Actually, I typed, I typed one by one. The first one, actually, this is a smaller sign. <laughs> Second one is a minus sign. <laughs> don't, don't get confused. It's, it has nothing to do with x smaller than something. I simply, you know, when you type a, a smaller sign and a little minus sign, they two together make an arrow. It's, it's exactly equivalent to equal sign, <laughs> just uh, assign the number two into X. Then they two exactly the same. Uh, question? Can we assign integer later? Assign on the number. On the number, assign different number into X again. Sure, let's try, for example. Now let's try X. Suppose I change my mind into say 10, into Say, how about 20? Now I assign 20 into X. Now, if I check out X again, X is 20 now, right? <laughs> Basically, later number gonna, gonna cover the previous one and replace the previous one, right? <laughs> so, but let's finish uh, the discussion introduction right here. They two exactly the same. They two exactly the same. But uh, as a traditional programmer like me, actually, we prefer the little arrow better. Why? Uh, more than one reason. More than one reason. First of all, equal sign, there's no direction. The left hand side, right hand side, you know. Uh, but of course, we always want to assign right hand side stuff into left hand side, right? The arrow, it's kind of clear, you know, <laughs> we assign number direct direction in, into X. Right? And so first of all, the little arrow looks like there's a direction, it assigns right-hand side stuff into left-hand side. That's the reason number one. Reason number two is uh, right here, the single equal sign, single equal sign is a sign number into X. In our actually also other computer programs such as Stata, besides a single equal sign, there's also commands such as Double equal, 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 right? <laughs> it's for a different purpose. If you type x equal, equal to, actually that's a comparison. x and the two, are they really the same? So very often double equal sign are used to try to compare stuff. That's why traditional program like me, <laughs> we try to avoid using single equal sign to avoid mistakes. So we always use the, this little arrow to, to assign numbers into x. But in short, both of them, both of them work. They actually they are equivalent to each other. Just a personal habit. If you if you like equal sign better, you know, feel free to use that one. But uh, but in most uh, our student textbook, you're gonna see the arrow sign. We use it that way. So personally, I would suggest you to use the arrow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, just to keep in mind, it will be the same as equal sign. Same thing. So. That's a sign number into X. Now we are ready to introduce line number 35. This line, as we mentioned just now, right hand side, R norm 100, for example, R norm 100 is 100 numbers, right? Of 100 random numbers, which follows normal distribution, a standard normal distribution. Standard normal means a mean is a zero. Variance is one, right? So centered at a zero and the variance is one. So in R, you not only, you can not only assign number into X. If you like, you, you can also assign a list of numbers. In this case, either, either call it a list of numbers or call it a vector of numbers, right? <laughs> anyway, a bunch of numbers into X. So now after I run line number 35, now X will be these 100 numbers. For example, let's see. I'm gonna run line number 35. Now I assign 
these 100 numbers into x. If you check out x again, if I check out x again, see, x is these a list of 100 numbers, right? So that from now on, x contains 100 numbers. So that, for example, if you want to check out the average of these 100 numbers, the variance of these numbers, the smallest or largest of these 100 numbers, right? You can always uh, do that one afterwards, right? So let's continue to introduce in these uh, comments. Uh, these are now, uh, right, see the first time I create 100 numbers, second time I create 100 numbers could be different unless you set a seed to make, make sure you really, you know, exactly the same. In this example, we don't have to, we don't have to, we just need some random numbers to illustrate the idea, right? So let's see, by using these random numbers, which is X, I want to show you some quick commands. For example, summary of X. Summary is a command to show summary information. Let's try it. Summary, parenthesis X. Output is I see minimum, maximum, mean, median, or actually median and a mean, right? And uh, first quartile, third quartile. So what what are they? Minimum is a smallest number, negative two. Uh, max is a maximum, positive two point one, right? They are, for example, positive two point one. Uh, uh, anyway, it's somewhere. <laughs> uh, uh, number 50. Oh, right, right here. That's the largest number, right? Thank you. Yeah, sharp eyes. <laughs> so, so that's the largest number, right? It's right here. Smallest one, so negative to uh, some. Uh, not that this. Third. Oh, right here. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are good. <laughs> uh, probably take take me 10 minutes <laughs> to find the number. <laughs> anyway, those are the minimum, maximum. Median and mean. You guys probably learned them in your status course, right? Mean is simply is average. Uh, you know, we have 100 numbers. The summation of these 100 numbers, then of course, divided by 100, right? That's the average, we call it a mean. Median is the number in its middle. In other words, let's sort these 100 numbers from the smallest one to the largest one, right? And so, you know, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. The number exactly in the middle will be our median, right? For example, if you have three numbers, if you sort from the smallest one to the largest one, the number one, two, three, the number in its middle. Number two will be median, right? If you have four numbers, one, two, three, four, the, we don't have number exactly in the middle, right? Between two and three, the average of two and three will be the median. That's the calculation of our study. So that's median, you know I mean? First quartile, third quartile, what are they? If you have 100 numbers, for example, the number in its middle, roughly it's a number 50, will be median, right? May will sort the number from smallest one to largest one. The number 50 will be median. Uh, first quartile, basically, this is number uh, 25. <laughs> and uh, median is number 50. Third quartile will be number 75. So 25, 50, 75. Right, so it's basically divide divide all numbers into like four parts, right? From zero to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to, to 100, right? So divide into to equal parts. So what's the purpose of these, uh, of these numbers? Of course, minimum, maximum can show us the, the range, right? The, the first quartile, median, and third quartile, basically, we use these numbers to take a quick look. We can check out the distribution. Is that the kind of symmetric or not? Because if it is really symmetric, then for example, suppose a center at a zero, then the number 25 and number 75 should be kind of symmetric between each other, right? So this summary information is more like uh, we check out the distribution by using these numbers, right? Uh, the next one, mean. 
Me, actually, let's run it first. M E A N mean of X. First of all, this number is exactly the same as right here, uh, except uh, the precision, how many, how many digits of number, right? So if you want the mean only, you can simply type mean of X. So that directly gives you the average, right? Similarly, if you want to, if you want minimum or maximum, you can type min parenthesis x, max parenthesis x, right? So on the first. So summation of x, sum short for summation. Summation of x is uh, simply calculate all those numbers all, all together, right? This is summation. Length of x. Length of x is uh, how many numbers in x? <laughs> Basically, simple size of x, how many number right there? We call it simple size n, right? So summation divided by n, actually, this is exactly the definition of average, right? So, so let's check it one by one. Sum of x, sum of x is negative 6. Length of x must be 100. How many numbers are, are they, right? So sum divided by n. Summation divided by n. By definition, this should be the same as our average right here, right? <laughs> Basically, we, we, we program, we calculate sample mean manually, right? <laughs> by using average divided, uh, summation divided by n, we calculate the average again, right? So that's a simple example, how to, how to do some really simple programming. Um, Oh, <laughs> question. How do you run the X? I have my last line being I seven seven five six. One by two. So the 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 data that I'm using. Uh, so it's on line so it's nine is nine. Oh, I see. Uh, you mean. On your computer, it shows a ninety-seven right here. <laughs> let's let's talk about what are the the number in the bracket. Actually, let's scroll up. Beforeers, when we type something like two times three, two divided by three, and you know, besides besides the number, we have a number one in a bracket, right? <laughs> What's this one bracket? It simply means your output, your result is a single number. You have only one number right there, right? So. When we check out my result, 100 random numbers, it shows one, six, 11, what are they? It's, this is my first number, you know, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, then goes to number six, right? This number seven, so on so first. So that eventually 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, right? So on so first. So, Actually, it's just show you to try to help you to calculate which number it is, right? To get a quick idea. Actually, first of all, you know, these numbers, uh, it doesn't matter. For example, if you if I adjust the size of my screen, let me let me show the 100 number random numbers again. And this one. <laughs> in my line, because I might make it wider, right? And now it contains six numbers, right? That's why this number is a number seven, so on the first, right? So, so that right here shows up 97, 98, 99, 100, right? So <laughs> short answer is that this number actually doesn't matter. Is that your, is that your question? Uh -huh. Yes, the answer is like based on Oh, could be different because my random numbers could be different from your random numbers, right? <laughs> Again, unless we set a C, unless if you really want the, exactly the same 100 random numbers, we can we can do that. Uh, right, right. Again, unless unless we force it to be the same. <laughs> unless you really want to replicate my result exactly the same, right? In that case, we do we don't have a you know a solution. But in our case, we don't have to, right? We just want to create some random numbers. We don't have to, you know, your 100 random numbers doesn't have to be the same as mine. 
we just had calculate some random numbers and uh, so that further calculate average summation and so on so forth. <laughs> Like explanation, it is more like a standard form. How do you correct it? Do you have negative zero for something that is mean? You mean the EXP command? Oh, for the EXP command, we have the one point uh, four three seven six two six E. Oh, oh, I see. I see your question. Uh, I see your question. On my computer, it doesn't show, but uh, I know your question. Uh, sometimes if your number is really, really small, too small, or really, really large, too large, then the computer use a scientific, scientific uh, notation, such as, for example, say, uh, say 1.01e, uh, then minus, say, 10, or plus 10. It just means... Uh, it means I move the decimal to the left or to the right, how many digits? So that uh, that's a scientific notation. If you want to, you know, if you want, if you want the computer to show exactly how it, it, it is feasible, later on I show you more details. But for now, you know, ignore the, those details for now. <laughs> later on, I'll show you more details. Um, let's continue to check out a real data set. Uh, to learn uh, uh, library CR. We are talking about this package. See, for now, take, you know, keep an eye on the box right here. It's empty. It's empty right here, right? Let's see. I'm going to run this line. Library CR. Once I run, run. So loading. There is uh, no difference. <laughs> okay. Anyway, loading package here is. Uh, so once we, what's the usage of this uh, command library CR? Basically, those packages already installed on your computer, but they're not in the memory yet because uh, if you by default, uh, once you open our studio, if it really opens all those uh, packages in memory, you're gonna take too much. It's it gonna slow down your computer calculation, right? So that you know, for to us, whatever needed, load it into a memory. We use a command library CR. Library is a command. Load this package into R so that so that we can we can use something within this package. What we're gonna do? If let me show you some CR in this package. We have a data set called Duncan. Let me show you where it is. D U. Um, maybe I turn the bottom. Anyway. For example, let's see. If now, if I, for example, type Duncan, D-U-N-C-A-N. -E it pops up the data set on my computer. So that's the details of my data set. Those are accountant, uh, so on and so forth, such as author, chemist, lawyer, so on and so forth. What type of their job? Uh, how about their income, education, prestige? Those are index between zero and 100. The higher, the better. For example, if your income is really, really high, close to 100, then it means those are, are a rich job, right? A very good job is a lot of, a lot of money. Uh, education, for example, this is 100. This is uh, means uh, this job needs a really long, many, many years education, right? And uh, uh, prestige means uh, how do people respect this kind of job, right? So those are... So we have uh, four variables right here. For example, for example, this is dentist. Dentist education 100 means they need uh, really many, many years education, right? How about their income? 80, uh, pretty good, right? And uh, prestige also 95, you know, very close to 100. So basically dentist look like a good job. Let's see, what's this? Minister, 
education kind of uh, kind of high. We need 84. We need many, many years education, right? But talk about income is only 21, right? <laughs> that basically means that you don't want to be a minister no matter what kind of job. I, I'm not sure what a minister is, but I don't want to be, <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's see what else. Similar, similarly, we have a bookkeeper, right? So we have uh, uh, right here, income is 29, education 72, so on and so forth. Do we have any, uh, where's carpet? Just like formal. All right, here, let's, let's check out calendar. All right, 21, 23, 33. Uh, education kind of low. Income is also kind of low, right? Uh, it's kind of fair. <laughs> you know, but uh, hopefully, hopefully not something like uh, really high education, but really low income, right? Those kind of jobs. Let's see if we can find any other. Uh, janitor, sheet fire. Janitor is here, policeman is here, so on and so forth. Let's see. <laughs> right, I'll I'll leave. Uh, oh, let I find one interesting job. R R engineer must be railroad engineer. Education twenty eight, right? <laughs> kind of uh, very low, right? But talking about income eighty one, right? <laughs> Better be a R R engineer, railroad engineer, right? So uh, that's basically some features we find find out from this data set, right? Why is the data set is called Duncan? Because uh, this data set was first used uh, in a paper. Uh, the author's name is Duncan, so uh, that's the author. So uh, so that's why the CR package put this uh, data set within the package as uh, as a sample data set to illustrate their idea. Uh, these three are numbers or index between, between zero and 100. The first column type, those are professional job. WC means a, a white collar workers. Uh, BC means uh, blue collar workers, so on so forth. So let's, Let's check uh, a couple lines of this uh, data set. Attach, attach Duncan means, actually, let me show you. If I, without, so what happens if we skip line number 44? If I ask computer, give me line number 46, add of Duncan, no matter what it is. Actually, it still works. Uh, how about this one? Also works. Uh, then why? Why I need to learn number 44? Uh, I'm supposed to, you know, <laughs> well, you know, I'm supposed to show you actually without attach the data set. Actually, sometimes, sometimes when you call call computer to find a variable for me, for example, if you call computer, find the variable income, computer may not know which data set you're talking about, right? So that's why we want to use a command attach parentheses Duncan so that the computer knows, okay, let's go to the Duncan data set to, to look for the variable income. So uh, in this example, maybe maybe the Duncan data set already in, in, in the CR package so that even, even if we skip this one, it still works. But anyway, let's check out, let's check out this command, head of the data. My data set is called Duncan, right? Head of Duncan means just show me the very, very top, very first five lines. Take a quick look of the data because sometimes your data set could be really, really big. If you, if you want to print out the, the whole data set on your screen, it kind of goes on and on, right? It takes a long time, right? So, you know, you may not be interested in to, to see all the data set. You just want to take a quick look. What do I have in my data, right? So, you know, just the first couple lines will be good enough. So head, parentheses, data, just show me first couple lines. Uh, similarly, you know, guess what if you want to check out the bottom, the very last of five lines, what command will be, will be the corresponding command? If I want to see the, the, the very last of five lines, 
Uh, you're close. <laughs> uh, kind of close. <laughs> Head shows the first of five lines. Tail. <laughs> for example, for example, tail. Okay, shows the very last of five lines. <laughs> Head and tail. Summary. Summary. I print out the, the result right here. Summary of data. In my data, I have uh, a couple of columns, right? So just now, for example, before words, before words, when our X is 100 numbers, right? Then we summary X, it gives give us the smallest one, the largest one, mean, median, so on and so forth about X, about one variable, right? Now my data set contains a bunch of uh, variables, you know, four or five columns, right? Then you summarize the whole data set, which contains four or five columns. Then by default, automatically, computer summarize, summarize each column. For example, for the, for the column of income, you can see minimum is seven. It means the smallest income is a seven. The highest income is 81. Uh, is that dentist? <laughs> and um, median and a mean, right? So on so forth. First quartile, third quartile, so on so forth. Similarly, for the second variable, education, we also have the smallest one and the largest one, mean and median, so on and so forth, right? And prestige, same thing. Height, height, height is not a number. It's three different, uh, you know, characteristics, right? Those are words. So we have three types of uh, uh, jobs. So when we when we summarize type of job, so our result is a blue collar worker. We have twenty one of them. A professional worker, eighteen of them. A white collar worker, we have six of them. Right. Just to summarize uh, th three categories. In each category, how many workers are they? Right. So summary is a very nice command. Then you can either summarize a variable or summarize a whole data set. Right, so of course it's, the whole data set contains all those variables, right? So that's a quick introduction of uh, of this uh, file. Similarly, if you want to compile, if you want to compile a corresponding HTML, still remember which which button? Right here, right? <laughs> compile. Let's try. Once you click compile. Uh, output HTML. Click compile. It takes uh, right here. We got the result. Introduction to our author date. Date will be automatically today. Automatically today. And those are the command result. Command result. Sounds worse, right? We don't have a graph in this example, but uh, that's everything from the. So uh, when you do when you do your homework, similarly, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about homework in a second. When you do your homework, I, you're gonna be asked to to do some calculation, and uh, once you, you type the codes in a file, and similarly click the button compile, so that make this HTML file. Once you have this HTML, of course, make sure you change your, your name uh, and also the file name, homework number one, so on so forth, right? So that you're ready to submit this HTML file to, to Canvas. Where do you find this uh, HTML file? First of all, by default, it will be exactly the same folder. You put your R file. For example, my R file I put in M drive ECO6426 folder. So, you know, by default, this HTML will be exactly in the same folder, exactly, uh, you know, will be the same name, uh, but of course, a uh, different, uh, uh, you know, dot HTML, right? For example, let me show you M, M drive, uh, this folder. Mm. This is uh, the folder right here. Uh, introduction, actually sort by time. Here it is. This is my introduction to R. This is a R file. So when I compile HTML, I got introduction R, 
index.html file. It's exactly in the same folder under same name, right? So now when, when you need to submit homework to, to Canvas, right? Go to this folder to look for your result, right? So, you know, uh, actually you can then you double click this button. When you double click this button, it's gonna be automatically open in a in default browser. In my case, it will be open Chrome. Or in your uh, R file right here, if you click button right here, open in browser, same thing. It will be brought to, to my browser right here. So that, so that, for example, suppose you're wondering, uh, what if I need to print out my result, right? So that, for example, if you open it in a browser like this, uh, there's my button print uh, right here, right? You can print the, the current HTML file, right? If you really need to print it in, you know, hard copy. Yes. Yes. Yes, once you compile it, it, it's automatically saved on your computer. If you make some changes and the compile again, you're gonna cover replace the old one, right? For example, let's let's try. All right, for example, let's try. Um, where's my file? Let's uh, at the very beginning. Let me. Let me randomly one, 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 uh, plus two, two, two. Add randomly add some numbers. That calculation right here. Let's try again. Compile. Come on. Oh, it's here. It's here has been updated, right? My my new calculation shows right here. Yeah, if you go to this folder, click introduction dot R, see, it's been updated. Yeah, <laughs> so 